Okay, good day everyone. Well, welcome to today's lecture. Um, we're going to be talking about gases, so it's the part one. So you should be preparing for your quiz somewhere around about now. So preparing and looking forward to the quiz. So let's just go into it. So we're going to start our lecture on gases and in gases we are going to be talking about the measurement on gases, the ideal gas law, the gas law calculations, stoichiometry of gas reactions and we know stoichiometry has to deal with reactants and products calculations of all reactants and products. Then we have the gas mixtures which are the partial pressure and then the mole fraction and then we have kinetic theory of gases and then real gases. So we're going to be doing all of that in this topic. So first and foremost, we're going to start about start with our measurement on gases. The quantities that we do measure with regards to gases are the volume, the amount, the temperature, and pressure. All of these things are very familiar to us on the first part, and it's very important that we understand that this is how we approach or measure the state of gas because it's gas, the state of gas is matter. And I will just go into this first tree, which is your volume, amount, and temperature. So we know that gases expand with uniform uniformly across. And a typical example, let me see what I can reach for it. It's in here somewhere. Let me find it to make the whole thing about it. So it's it's a balloon given to me by one of my students who I promised them that they would get extra points if they got me a balloon. So I got this and to aid the illustration that we're going to be doing since we're talking about that is sorry for the noise. I hope most of the balloons will work. I really do hope it does. So I'll take out maybe one or two and see what it does. Yeah, so we have them here for illustration. Um, I'll try to blow into them. So notice that there's a volume of air inside this, and as I was blowing it up, the increase was according to the amount that I put in. So we have some volume of air here which we reduce according to the amount that I let out. So we remember the volume is liters, milliliters, and centimeters. And then we have mole, which is used to express the matter in a gaseous sample. So we said from the last lecture where we did mass relations in stoichiometry, we have the mole equal to, we have mass equal to molar mass times mole and then now you can have when you divide both sides by molar mass you have mole equal to mass over molar mass and then you have your temperature as well because temperature is the third part and we did that in the previous lectures where we said temperature can be measured in degree celsius degree fahrenheit and kelvin so for the sake of gases we're going to be using the kelvin scale the kelvin that's basically what we're going to be using, and it's just your centigrade plus the degree centigrade plus 273.15. So we now move to pressure. Pressure is also very important and it's force by unit area. And to explain pressure, notice that the force that I apply using this marker on my hand is applied to a unit area, and hence we call it pressure. So you push the unit area, it affects the region, but the force is applied in a particular area. So, so force per unit area, which is force over the area it's applied, is your pressure. And just to give a pep talk around about it, notice that every time there's pressure, there has to be a direction because force is directional. So if there's a pressure, the pressure will, will probably be maybe on your academics, program will be on your family life. There's going to be 
pressure on different areas which will challenge you to withstand pressure so whether you like it as a human being whether you like it or not as a human being you have to face a certain level of pressure or the order is left for you to rise up to the occasion so we have um, the measurement of pressure in the English system in pounds per square inch which is denoted your PSI pounds per square inch and then you have um, um, what we call the atmospheric pressure and the atmospheric pressure is a pressure that the um, atmosphere exerts on us so and um, it's about 14.7 psi remember psi is pounds per square and then we have what we call a mercury barometer and this is a device that is used to measure atmospheric pressure and as the name implies mercury barometer we'll see that in the next slide to explain ourselves so what you have in the bowl is mercury and then you have an inverted tube a capillary tube and its calibrations is in millimeter millimeter hence when atmospheric pressure is exerted on the pool of mercury in the bowl you notice that the mercury goes up and when it goes up it meets it stops at the mark 760 millimeters so that's hence the atmospheric pressure at 1 atm atm and note that your atm is not your automated teller machine where you go and get money the atm in this case is atmosphere so it's mercury that will give you this exact measurement because of the unique properties of mercury and you have that for that so the whole barometer thing was brought about by an individual called inventorista Torricelli and this is used to measure atmospheric pressure and we also know that it varies at sea level it's very very and it's understandable if you think about how the pressure on sea flows and the whole wave and everything so you have a range at sea level but at ground level you have that 760 so uh, yeah we know the rest of that you can see that in slide so we have what we call a manometer different from the barometer in the barometer you just measure atmospheric pressure but in the manometer you can find out the atmospheric pressure in comparison to another gas not just that of mercury so you can find the atmospheric pressure of a gas so fluid is used and the fluid used in this manometer is mercury same as the barometer as well and what you do is the level of the inner tube which is the inner part of it which is A against the outer part which is a B so the lower if the inner part is lower than the outer part it simply means that the atmospheric pressure of the gas is greater than that of the atmosphere which you can see here so if if this if the gas in the tube in the container pushes down more than the pressure of the atmosphere you know that this has more pressure than this it's obvious because this pushes further and if the reverse is the case that means the atmosphere has more pressure than the other so hence you're using it's almost like a tug of war if you know what a tug of war is where there's a push and a pull so the people who push more are strongest or the people who pull more are strongest in comparison to the other so that's that and we look at units of pressure it's important to understand that pressure has units you have the PSI as we saw, we have um, millimeter mercury, which is that the millimeter is the height, mercury is the substance that goes that height. So you can have um, a unit as gas of, of gas pressure expressed in millimeter mercury, denoted mmHg, and then you have tor, which is also used as well, is that at one millimeter mercury or at a certain specific condition not equal to zero degrees so this is a unit tor and it's related to mercury as well it's just a unit 
and then you have the atmosphere which is your ATM it's another unit used as well so we can see that you compare these units among themselves the same way you have um, currencies and you have um, the units across the currencies and also the conversion factors across the currency or the only difference is that currency changes with time or changes with economics and whole news and all of that and the drama in the marketplace but this is fixed but it's almost like you have your ATM is equal to 14.7 PSI your one ATM also equal to 760 millimeter maker and we see how the unit cuts across so we also have pascals the SI unit of measurement is pascals which is your PA um, you have um, pascal one pascal is actually the pressure exerted on 0 0.1 millimeter high film of water on this on the surface beneath it um, some of us um, are familiar with what we call surface tension and when you apply pressure on something there's some form of resistance that you feel so the hands we we we, we walk with Pascal on the lines of the how thin it is to resist the pressure exerted on it and hence you create that as a standard for the units that we call Pascal so we put a standard one millimeter high film of water and then the surface beneath it hence the pressure which we say is force per unit area exerted on that and so you have that for Pascal we say one bar is equal to 10 to the power of 5 Pascal and notice that um, I think most of the times I remember when you're watching boxers punch boxers with heavy punches are measured in bars is that when they hit and that's why um, even people that do listen to rap music will tell you the rapper speed bars and not I know there's a part of bars being stab notations but there's a part of bars given punches on or hits or rhyme or flow and all of those things so all of those ideologies are on about that so we have them in a line where 1.013 bar is equal to 1 atm which is equal to 760 millimeter mercury which is equal to 14.7 psi which is equal to 1 or 1.3 kilopascal notice it's not pascal it's kilopascal meaning it's 10 to the power of 3 because you can't have one bar equal to 10 to the power of 5 pascal and then all of a sudden you're seeing 100 so it's still the same exact thing if you look at it but notice that the scale is 1.013 and the other end is 101.3 so we have an example to explain all that it is that we're going to do together just marry every of those units and the confession together because we're going to do an exercise on it so for this one i'll have you to try to attempt to solve it yourself by pausing the video because i think we've not done that in a while so try to attempt to do it by pausing the video and attempting to solve the question given Okay, I know some of you might not know what pause is. Okay, let's just go for it. If you pause, try and attempt some of the questions. If you can't, just continue. So the question reads, at room temperature, dry ice, which is solid CO2, so dry ice, void of liquid, becomes gas at 77 degrees Fahrenheit and then you have 13.6 ohms of dry ice are put into a steel tank with a volume of 10.00 feet cube the tank pressure gauge registers 11.2 psi which is um, pounds per square inch express the volume of the tank in liters and the amount of CO2 in grams and moles and temperature in degrees Celsius and Kelvin and the pressure in bars, millimeter mercury and atmosphere. So we're going to do a whole lot of conversions in this question. Hence, we write out what we're given, which is volume in ten in in feet cube, 
and pressure on 11.2 psi temperature in degree Fahrenheit and the mass of CO2 which is the dry ice in 13.6 ohms so first and foremost we start by working out our molar mass of CO2 which we're going to use to do the things around about mass and then we convert our degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius and then from Celsius to Kelvin so then we asked for volume, pressure, temperature and then moles of CO2 to so find conversion factors and then go right into it so for the volume we know that one feet is equal to somewhat equal to 28.32 liters so hence if one feet is equal to 28.32 then 10 feet will be multiplied by 28.32 liters so when you cross multiply that you have that value because it's, if I can write it in the air if one feet is equal to 28.32 then 10 feet will be equal to x and if you cross multiply 10 multiply by um, 28.32 divided by 1 you have what you see there and then for the PSI is the same 1 ATM is equal to 14.7 PSI then 11.2 will be equal to X then you cross multiply and then you have 0 0.762 ATM and for the millimeter mercury same situation you can do the PSI to the ATM and the ATM to the millimeter mercury because you can use your answer from there directly you said if one ATM is equal to 760 millimeter mercury then 0 0.762 ATM is equal to X you cross multiply that you get the same answer I hope you're not bad with cross multiplication because it's chemistry math is involved so those of you that have been running away from mathematics you are welcome so we have the unit in bars and we know that 1.013 bar is equal to 14.7 psi so x in bars is equal to 11.2 psi so if you cross multiply you have a situation where your psi will cancel the psi and then the bar will be multiplied by the value 1.2 11.2 divided by 14.7 and then you get your answer in bar and for the temperature calculation notice that you're going to use the formula that we are aware of from the previous lecture which has to do with finding your Fahrenheit with your degree Celsius and you work it backwards hence you have 77 take 32 to the other side it becomes minus so it's going to be 77 minus 32. If you do that, I think you should have um, 50, no, yeah, 45. You should have 45. You should have 45. So, on 45, divide both sides by 1.8. You will have 25 as your answer, 25 degrees Celsius. So, it's just you're moving things over to the other side and then converting. Um, then, when you have 25, just add 273.15 to it. You have your answer in Kelvin. Always put the units. And then for O's, one gram is equal to 0 0.03527 O's. That's your conversion factor. Once you do that, if one gram is equal to this in O's, then 13.6 O's is equal to X in grams. Just cross multiply that and you have your answer. You can do this, I have just said graphically, or you just put what you are looking for over what you have your initial over what you want if you cancel out o's you cancel out the o's and then you have grams and given that you know co2 is 12 plus 16 times 2 you will get 44.01 so remember we're looking for moles of co2 and you're going to do mole one mole because it's grams per mole but you're going to reverse that so that because if one mole is equal to 44.01 gram then x the moles that you have in the grams that you have 
or the x mole is equal to the whatever value you have from there in grams when you cross multiply you have 8.77 mole so that's how this is worked you can watch it again if you miss something going forward if you have a problem with calculations you will probably struggle to understand what exactly just happened here because I cannot write graphically to show you how the proceedings go but straightforward mass is just there before you then we go into the ideal gas laws and first we look at direct proportionality of volume to amount and the amount is the mole volume is the volume as we know it and in that situation you have constant temperature and constant pressure so that's the first one and notice that your constant there k1 is your proportionality constant and then the second the child's law which is based off direct proportionality of volume again is the temperature and the temperature is absolute temperature so your volume is directly proportional to temperature given that your um, amount and pressure is constant and two French scientists that came up that suggested this relationship which is um, I think one of the French students told me is um, it's not Jack who is um, Jacko, is it Jacko or something like that? It's, it's not Jacko because it was my English or my uh, by my understanding, I think it's Jackie or Jackish, but it's Jack or something like that, Charles, and then um, Joseph K. Lusak. So, two French scientists came up, and uh, it's called the Charles G. Lusak Law or Charles Law simply. So, that's the first one. Notice that the K2 is the second proportionality constant. The numbers will make sense as we go forward. So, notice that. Direct proportionality will mean an increase in volume will increase number of moles. So you can see over here that if you have one here, you have um, this will be 0 0.05. If you have two, you have 0 0.1. So increase on one will increase the other for number of moles as well as temperature. The first one and the second one. So volume increase in volume also increase temperature, and it's true. Because the more the volume increase, the more the temperature increase, the more the volume will be same when there's constant pressure and amount. So that's that for that transaction. And to explain this, notice that once you have balloons and you have liquid nitrogen in a beaker, liquid nitrogen. In case you didn't realize, there's some movies, horror movies, when you see all those fumes. It's not just steam. Most of the times they use liquid nitrogen to create that scenario of horror. So you can see the film coming out. So that's very cold. Liquid nitrogen is very cold. In fact, it's what makes your refrigerator cool. It's cool is one of the components of the cooling mechanism of a refrigerator. So that other side. This is that you have balloons. And the moment you put those balloons in a cold beaker, beaker containing liquid nitrogen, they shrink in size. They shrink in size. This is an experiment that you can do. If you carry balloons and put them inside your refrigerator, even if the balloon doesn't shrink in size, the ice is going to form inside. It will make the balloon go down in size. So, and notice some people, I think in my class, somebody was like, oh, but teacher, why don't you put water inside the refrigerator? It expands. I said, that's water. Gas, different. The, Properties of gas, liquid, and solids are different. They are very different. So, gas is what the question is because it has more interesting properties. That's why we're studying. So, notice that it gets deflated, then you have the whole situation. You put a whole lot inside. Um, well, it confirms the whole idea of Charles Law, where you're drop in temperature will also drop the volume drop in temperature drop the volume that confirms what we're saying so i mean you take it out when the temperature gradually increases and it cools off you find that the balloon goes back in size again so we have also ball's law 
and Boyle's law whose inversely proportional thing that is the only one that's inversely proportional in the three laws you have volume is inversely proportional to pressure meaning that an increase in volume will decrease pressure increase in volume will decrease pressure provided that the amount is constant and temperature is constant so you have K3 and proportional constant K3 so the equation of vast proportion and this is robot ball who is English or ball is English so he forms the equation called the ball law. so in this you can see that the graph is very different from the two others we have seen where an increase in volume notice from here when you increase volume you have a decrease in pressure five one four one point five there about two three i think two three is almost where it's in between almost where it's in between then three two so almost where that's the middle ground for both of them four you have one point five so you see that relationship between them one increase and one decreases the order it goes to one end and that's why you have a curve not a constant graph or that line running tree and the ideal goes law as i said i think when i mentioned a little bit when i was talking about dimitri dimitri mendeley from the periodic table is the person that put together the tree that found the relationship with the three gas law got laws and brought them together to form an ideal gas law and the word ideal is almost like the normal or the standard for gases the standard law for all gases to play and abide by just put all the laws together to have that thing called the ideal gas law where your k1 k2 and k3 all is enveloped in your gas constant r and you can have this r in calculator some calculators have this constant called the gas constant so it's basically where that is um it's equal to 0 0.0 821 liter multiplied by the pressure all over the mole multiplied by your temperature notice that all of these things are formed the formula itself pressure atm volume liter mole amount mole temperature kelvin underneath and being so that if you Cancel if you more if you divide both sides by liter and ATM you have mole and temperature which is just on the side so it doesn't have any units because it has the unit of every individual component of that. So in the values of R you notice that we can use R in different other problems, not just gas laws. So equations involving um, energy in joules, you have 8.31 as joule appearing as a product of your volume and, pre uh, and pressure yeah, in ATM. So you have that there as your unit that you can use in equations involving energy. So, and this is where you come from, what I've just said, one liter. Uh, the product of one liter of ATM of pressure is equal to 101.3 1 joules. If you remember, the Pascal has something similar to this, the value is similar to this in a sense. So, hence the connection energy. And then you have the 8.31 here as well to the power of 3. Hence, you have a whole lot of play. What this has to do with calculations involving molecular speed. So that's out of the way. Let's just go down to our standard temperature and pressure. That's what we call standard temperature and pressure. When calculations are done at standard temperature and pressure, they will involve one atm, two seven three kelvin or zero degrees Celsius, and one mole which is occupying a volume that is 22.4 liters so that is 
STP. When something is said to be at STP, this is the value of pressure, 1 atm is the value of temperature, 273 Kelvin or 0 degrees Celsius, which is the same. And the value of volume is 22.4 liters and then mole is 1. So hence, that is what was put together to have the unit the gas law, the constant, the gas law um, value, the value for the gas law constant, the gas constant here. So let's quickly move. So gas law calculations are what we're going to look at. And when we're looking at calculations on gas law, we're trying to solve problems because calculations are meant to help us solve problems. We have a problem, we go to calculate it. We're going to calculations to solve the problem. So you have your final and initial state problems where you have what it was and what it is after several things had happened. So you have your calculations which you can decide to find pressure where volume and amount and temperature is given or volume where pressure amount and temperature is given or amount where pressure, volume and temperature is given or pressure or temperature where pressure, volume, and amount is given, depends on the condition. So you use your ideal gas law equation to work that out. And then you have your molar mass and density problems, so we'll look at that later. So your initial and final state problems, this here will involve you now, as we said earlier, where you have your initial values that you have and then you're asked to find what will happen when changes occur this changes occur over a period and you might be given some parameters and asked to find the other so it involves the examination of the effect of volume pressure amount and temperature due to changes in one or more of these variables so variables will change and then you work out and work out do your calculations on the basis of the changes or differences in the variables then the ideal gas law is applied in this type of problem. So we use the ideal gas law and the two point equation can be derived from the ideal gas law to solve the problems where we have our initial and our final and we use the premise of the similarity in the gas constant to knock the two equations together. So we do that and we have an example of which I am trying to work out our ability to start and finish the example but I think we'll go for it. So we have an example here and we said a, a sealed 15.0 liter steel tank is used to deliver propane gas with a C3H8 gas. It's fitted with a pressure valve, a pressure gauge sorry, and a valve. So you have a pressure gauge, something that you use to see where the pressure is and then a valve that tends to take up the excess pressure. So the valve automatically opens to release gas when the pressure of a tank gives above 1.2 atm. So anytime it gives above 1.2, gas is released when it gets above 1.2. So the tank is filled with 24.7 grams of propane at 25 degrees Celsius. So notice the temperature is very important because changes in temperature, as we said, Will also affect pressure so so an increase in temperature will play around with, with the pressure and all of those things so hence the question is the gauge the pressure gauge registers 0 0.915 atm so a now poses the question said if the tank is heated to 55.0 degrees Celsius Will the valve open to release propane? Then they now tell us something that's important. Say, assume that the expansion of the steel from an increase in temperature is negligible because normally when there's increase in temperature, steel usually will expand. So they're trying to tell us that we should ignore the changes to the to, to the size of the, of the tank. Just focusing on the changes in temperature. So let's just go quickly into it. You can attempt to solve it, but I'll just go for it because some people might not even bother. So notice this. You're given 
volume and we said volume will just stay the same we have pressure notice that the pressure that we have there the first the first pressure we see there is the amount that will cause a release of excess and then we have the second amount which is the 0 0.1915 that we have registered on the gauge so we have the mass we have all of those things there so let's just go right into it uh, yeah let's go right into it so notice that the proportionality that we do is on the strength of you know pv is equals to um nrt and r is constant so if you divide both sides by n and t you have pv is equals to nt so you can have your initial pv over nt and your final pv over nt that's what we see in the first part here as what we see in the first part that's how we got this hence if your volume is the same and your amount is the same you just take those things out because you don't have to they'll cancel out themselves because if they're the same they cancel out so you are focused on your pressure and your temperature because the changes happen in the pressure and the temperature the pressure and the temperature notice that this is a mistake this is one so if you do the initial pressure and then 25 plus 273 and then the 55 plus 273 if you actually cross multiply then taking this here multiplying 0 0.9152 the addition of 55 plus 273 and dividing it by 225 plus 273 you have your value as 1.01 atm and the question is will the valve open because 1.01 is less than 1.200 atm hence the valve is not going to be open so you have answered the first question let's see if we can go and answer the second question so the question now goes further to say if the tank if the temperature of the tank is increased to 200 degrees celsius the valve opens and resists propane how many grams of propane are released so we know that if you increase it to 200 55 got it to 1.01 hence 200 will shoot it so we already know that there's going to be an increase but that's why we're asking how much of the gas and it mean that we're looking for the amount in grams so let's go into how that is solved that is that we're going to convert the degree celsius to kelvin and then we're going to work out the mole of the propane and then we'll go from there let's just see how it's done so when we do that we will have the amount in kelvin and hence the 247 grams that we have if we work out the moles of that it's going to be you said if we want to find the mole we put the grams on that because we know that all of this is gotten from the propane and the propane so you do 12 times 3 plus 8 times 1.008 add them together you have 14 44.1 so the mole is here the gram is here this cancel this the amount of moles what you're going to have here then you create your whole system of V1, T1, N1, and P1. So you have our P1, we have our T1, which is the 25 plus 273. We have our N1, which we just got here. We have our V1, which is what we say stays the same regardless of the changes in temperature. Then we have our P2, which is we're using the P2 as the gauge because it doesn't go past this so this is the max so hence we use that p2 like that because we can't have the pressure unit so we put that as this and then we do t our t1 our t2 sorry is the value we got the 200 added to the 273 and then the n2 is what we're trying to find because when we find the mole we can minus it from the initial mole and get the value in mass of the the, 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 the of the, the gas that is released so we do the volume same so once we do the whole mass we'll find the mole this is the mole and with that in mind with that this value of mole you can either minus from that and get the mass or you can just convert this mole 
into grams and minus the mass that we have from the onset from the one that we discover is N2 because after the whole reaction has taken place and the gas is giving up, this is what is left. How do we know what is giving up? By minusing what we had with what is left and then we know what is given up. It's like you had 10,000 Turkish layer in your account, you run a transcription and then you have like 18, you have them um, like um, 8,000 Turkish layer afterwards. It's simple. 10 minus 8 will tell you that the last transaction you did was 2000 Turkish lira. Simple maths. So I'll stop here and we'll continue in the next lecture with calculations of P, V, N, or T. So see you guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next um, lecture. So keep yourself in tune with what is happening and study and you'll get the best out of the course. Take care and see you in the part two of the lecture.